Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I want to welcome all of those who are live with us on Zoom at the moment, who are on Facebook Live, and those who will be watching later on YouTube. I'd like to invite you to prepare yourselves for worship uh, by listening to our prelude. And I want to say we're very blessed this morning and myself and Denise are doubly blessed that we are getting to hear uh, Mika play her flute twice. And we thank her and Eduardo for their beautiful music. Will you make sure that you are muted? Thank you.
thank you to Eduardo and Mika for your beautiful music. Now I'd like to invite you to join me in the call to worship. Lord, as we gather together, we acknowledge we are a forgiven people. May, May we, we like you, you be generous and offering forgiveness to others. to others. You forgive us each and every day for the many ways we fall short of your mercy. Teach us, Teach us to embody, to embody your, grace, your grace, your love, your, love, your, your mercy, mercy, and your, your forgiveness, forgiveness to all those we encounter we this day. day. Bring your hearts to God this day. May, May God, God touch, touch our, our lives, lives with, with peace, peace and confidence. Amen. Amen. And now as we join Eduardo in our opening hymn, Free We Freely, I want to invite you to mute once again. Amen. I'd like to invite you to unmute and join together in our unison opening <laughs> prayer. Forgive us, gracious Father, for the limitations we have placed on our graciousness toward others. We often treat others well only if there is something in it for us. We apologize but only if we see no alternative. We justify our grudges when others have hurt us. We remember offenses that we should have long ago forgotten. We are far too comfortable with brokenness when we should be reaching out and healing. We expect you to forgive us when we find it hard to do the same for others. Grant us your pardon, O oh Father, and equip us to share your graciousness with others. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen.
Thank you again, Eduardo and Mika. If you've ever played a instrument such as the flute, you would know how much breath it takes to truly play the flute like that. So thank you, Mika, especially those high notes. The consistency in breath is such an important part in being able to play that instrument. And you've just done a beautiful job. So thank you so much. And I, now I would like to write, uh, invite all of those who are with us this morning to unmute and join together in our offering prayer and dedication. Uh, your uh, dedication to your gifts and ties uh, to our church makes possible our ministries and our worship. So thank you for that. Will you join together? As we offer our gifts to you this day, we are reminded that only through your presence with us and in us are we able to live generously, act compassionately, and forgive mercifully. Amen. Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. This is our time when we share our joys and concerns. Is there anyone here who has a joy or a concern they can put in the chat or unmute themselves and share it with us uh, here? 
if I'm not seeing someone, let me know. Yes, George. Uh, my granddaughter has come down with COVID. Oh. Uh, this past week. Oh. Uh, she's improving now. She was fully vaccinated, um, but uh, got sick anyway. And uh, my concern is that she recover fully and yes. uh, recover from the loss of taste and smell, which she's experiencing right now. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What is her name? Her name is Caitlin Peterson. Caitlin. And she lives in Seattle, Washington. Wow. How old is Caitlin? 23. She's 23. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, that, that's a very frightening perspective. Um, we really didn't count on being vaccinated and getting COVID. So this is a, a very important reminder. So thank you very much, George, that uh, we're not out of the woods yet. That's right. So thank you for that. Uh, and I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that. Are there other joys or concerns? Yes, Eduardo. Uh, yes, oh, sorry a minute. Um, sorry for the echo. Um, uh, yes, a, a concern or a prayer of care and, uh, and a joy. The concern is um, Kate, Katie uh, Seifert uh, passed away this week. Uh, some of you may not remember, but uh, her mother, um, uh, Carrie, Carrie Se formerly Carrie Seifert, now Carrie Vaughn, uh, was an active member of the church many, many, many years ago. And... Uh, was back recently to baptize her uh, granddaughter. And unfortunately, Katie, her daughter, passed away unexpectedly at 32 years old uh, this week. So our prayers with the uh, Carrie Vaughn uh, and, and uh, extended family. And uh, the, the joy, as I shared at the early service, uh, this is the uh, first time that Mika and I are able to play together again, uh, particularly in church since uh, Christmas of 2019. Uh, yeah. So it, it's been a joy to uh, do that again with her and make music together. And <clears throat> oddly and coincidentally enough, our friend Pam came to me at the end of the first service. Uh, the pew that where she was sitting, she found an old bulletin from Christmas Eve 2019. What? Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> with uh, with uh, you know Mika Mika listed listed there as she as she played for uh, for the uh, Christmas Eve service. But it's so co coincidental. Then this is the first time that we do it again since, and and Pam fans, finds a bulletin <laughs> from that date. <laughs> oh wow, that's yeah, amazing. It is. <laughs> that's a sign. It means you should be playing more regular, right? <laughs> together yes, probably <laughs> and as i said at the earlier service um when i have the opportunity to sing with my daughter it is it is such a joyful experience um it and indeed. so it's it's wonderful to be able to do that together as a family um thank yep. so thank you for sharing your wonderful ministry and yes uh katie seaford passed away this past wednesday her service will be uh this wednesday coming up We'll be having that service at Ward Funeral Home in Bristol, and it is a terrible tragedy. Anytime we lose our children, uh, that's just not the way it's supposed to be. So please keep uh, Katie's family and friends in your prayers this week. Are there other joys or concerns? Okay, I see nothing in the chat. And uh, if that is the case, would you uh, bow your head and pray with me? Gracious God, we come before you this morning seeking your love, seeking your presence, seeking your healing, seeking your peace. We specially pray for all of those who are suffering from COVID and their caregivers. And we especially pray this morning for Caitlin. Lord, give her strength, place your healing hands upon her, help her to recover fully for all of the trials and tribulations that she is facing at the moment. Help her to recover her sense of taste and her smell 
and help her to uh, recover quickly. Lord, we thank you. We thank you in advance for the blessings you will bestow upon her. And Lord, we don't want to forget about uh, some of the folks that we've prayed for these past couple of weeks. We certainly want to continue to pray for Scott Myers, the nephew of Cindy Priog, the 32-year-old young man who was still in critical condition after being hit by a car. We want to continue to pray for all of those who are on our hearts at the moment, those who we have not been able to share with one another. We want to thank you for the great joys that we share in our lives, the joy that we can come together on a Sunday morning and worship in the way in which we are able to worship, the joy that we live in a country where we are free to worship in any way in which we see fit. We thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, we thank you that we will place our trust and our confidence in you. You who are the bread of life, who has given to us the best example of what it means to truly serve you and witness to your love. We encourage us to serve you more fully. For we ask these things in Jesus' name through the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have two readings this morning, from both from the New Testament. And they have one big idea that we will see in both of those texts. And the idea is about forgiveness and bitterness. And we're continuing with my sermon series uh, called The Christian Atheist, When You Believe in God But Live As If He Doesn't Exist. And so today we're going to be focusing on when you believe in God, but you won't forgive. So our first scripture for this morning is from Ephesians 4, 30, 32. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. So instead, put away from you all bitterness, there's our word, and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And then from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Pursue peace with everyone and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and that no root of bitterness, there's that word again, springs up and causes trouble and through it many become defiled. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. In his book, The Christian Atheist, Craig Rochelle shares the following tragic personal story. Excuse me a minute. Somebody keeps going here, and I'm just going to take There we go. All right, I'm going to start over again. In his book, The Christian Atheist, Craig Rochelle shows, shares the following tragic personal story. He writes... When my little sister Lisa was born on my third birthday, my parents told me she was my birthday present from God. We've been inseparable ever since. I always believed that I was her protector, like a mother lion protecting her cubs. I was the big brother looking out for my little sister. You can imagine how I felt when I learned of the tragedy. I found out that my little sister had been molested for years by a close family friend. Max had been Lisa's sixth grade teacher. 
He taught me to play racquetball, shopped at my dad's retail store, and often cheered for my sister at her high school drill team performances. At the time, this single man in his mid-30s seemed like a nice person, looking out for, just looking for friends. Our family readily accepted him, unaware that behind the supportive teacher facade was a very sick man who repeatedly abused numerous girls over many years. To say that I wanted Max to burn in hell doesn't begin to convey how much I wanted him to suffer. Although the words rage, hate, and revenge come to mind when I think about Max, the English language simply doesn't have a word for how I felt. Unfortunately, I know exactly how Craig felt because when I became an adult, I found out that the same thing had happened to someone in my family. In our case, the perpetrator was a trusted family member. In all honesty, when I first learned about it, I had a hard time believing it. And then very shortly afterwards, my own murderous thoughts began. I wanted this person to suffer for what they did. I felt angry, betrayed, and sick. I experienced a loss of innocence and felt distrustful towards everyone. And because it was all I could think about, it became a poison in my life. And bitterness, there's that word, was allowed to take root. Groeschel writes of his own bitterness that it actually felt right. He said, as a Christian atheist, I felt justified in my bitter hatred. But as a Christian, he knew better. He knew that the Bible clearly warns over and over again about the danger of bitterness. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15 is one such piece of scripture, which we just heard read. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. The reality is the root of bitterness grows in the soil of hurt that has not been dealt with properly. See, when we feel justified in our bitterness, the root that Hebrews is talking about takes hold of our heart and there it begins to grow. All of us who garden fully understand that the purpose of a root is to absorb and to store. And Groeschel says that his heart absorbed and stored hurt, anger, hatred, and thoughts of revenge. His bitterness kept a detailed account. That's what he did. And truthfully, so did I. Over and over, we both played these stories over in our minds. And each time we pictured the bad guy, our hatred grew. And you know, bitterness can be frighteningly easy to justify. I'd like you to take a look at the screen. We're going to be looking at some questions that Rochelle asked, just like we've done the past couple of weeks. I think Denise has that on the slide. We're into week three. Yes, some ask yourself questions. And I want you to think about and remember that the longer the root of bitterness, the longer we allow the root of bitterness to live, the harder it is to kill. Because as the root bores deeper, its poison swells and spreads. So my question for you is, has the root of bitterness poisoned your heart? And so here's some things to think about. Are you truly able to forgive others for their wrongdoing? If not, do you feel justified in your bitterness? Has your bitterness become a poison in your life that you can't let go of? Has that poison affected your relationship with others? Has that poison affected your relationship with God? Do you truly want to be reconciled 
to Christ. Important things for us to be thinking about and being honest with ourselves about. You know, when you pull a weed from the ground, if you don't get the roots, the weed will return. So it is with bitterness. Fortunately, scripture shows us how to kill the root of bitterness. According to Ephesians 4, which was our other text for this morning, the only way to eliminate the root of bitterness is through forgiveness. Ephesians tells us clearly, get rid of it. Get rid of bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate with one another. Forgiving one another, just as Christ has forgiven you. Yet we all know that forgiving is easier said than done. But we do set ourselves up for failure when we try to rely on our own power. Because really only God's power can bring us to a place of even being willing to forgive. And perhaps you remember from last week, those of you who were with us, when we had our sermon on change, we learned from Romans 8 that the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is in us as believers. The same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is in us as believers. That's profound. And it is that power that not only leads us to change, but is the fundamental catalyst in the act of forgiveness. And so if that power that raised Christ from the dead is in us, then not only can we change, we can forgive. So the question becomes, then why don't we? Well, sometimes we won't forgive because forgiveness feels like a betrayal. If we forgive the perpetrator who abused our loved ones and somehow we're letting down the very people we want to, want to protect. Sometimes we won't forgive because the act of forgiveness somehow signifies to us that in forgiving, we're somehow condoning what the person has done. Sometimes we won't forgive because it feels like we're letting the guy off the hook, so to speak. After all, why should we forgive them? They don't deserve it. I felt that way. And sometimes we don't forgive because honestly, we don't know how to do it. But if we're not careful, the root of bitterness grows our hearts stone cold. And that's a problem. It's a really big problem because deep bitterness over one thing in our lives begins to quickly crowd out everything else. Did you ever meet somebody who was just simply bitter? It didn't matter what it was. They were angry. They were bitter. They just couldn't break out of that sense of being. Because when that happens, bitterness is all that we taste and feel and experience. It's like the weeds in our garden that we don't have the time to pull out. It's not long before they've taken over and choked the life out of everything else. This is what bitterness does. It chokes the life out of everything, including our relationships and especially our relationship with Jesus Christ. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Does that sound familiar? We just had that prayer. And we make that plea every week in worship when we pray the Lord's Prayer. And I wonder if you really thought about this, that when we pray that prayer, we're telling God right here every Sunday, that we're actually forgiving those who trespass against us. Are we? I mean, ask yourself, is this really true? 
Or are we just playing lip service to the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray? Now, by faith, Rochelle asked God to help him forgive his sister's perpetrator. He wrote a letter to this person explaining that Jesus could offer forgiveness to him and that uh, Rochelle had indeed forgiven him by allowing Christ to lead his heart. Now, my own forgiveness of the person who abused my family member was difficult. I never wrote or spoke to this person after I found that out. And to be honest, I had no desire to forgive him. But one day I realized that forgiveness was ultimately about being reconciled to Jesus Christ. And I didn't want anything to get in the way of that. I wanted to know God intimately and serve him wholeheartedly. And I did not want bitterness to get in the way of that. Everyone who's joining us today has their own stories of betrayal and pain. So I wanna ask you, what have you done with your stories? Have you allowed bitterness to take root? Do your stories play over and over in your head, keeping you angry, spreading poison? This week, I'd like to challenge you to believe in God and forgive. I know it's not easy, but I know it's possible because it's happened in my own life. I've been able to forgive, not because of anything that I've done, but because I have allowed Christ to lead my heart. And when I think about what Christ did for me on that cross for the forgiveness of my sins, I have to ask myself, do I have the right to not forgive someone when Christ did that for me? I don't think so. And so I would like you to take about five minutes every day this week, purposely set them aside. We can all find five minutes. I challenge the folks at our early service to put their phones down just for five minutes. Spend five minutes to contemplate where bitterness lives in your heart and to talk with God, to ask God to help you forgive and to ask God to help you destroy the root of bitterness in order to be reconciled to Christ. In the holy name of our Father, Lord and Savior, amen.
Go out as people of God. Go out as people of hope. Go out as people renew. Your sins are forgiven. You are made whole. Now walk in the light of God. Amen. My friends, we are filled to the brim with the goodness of God and the nourishment of Jesus Christ, the bread of life and the power of the Holy Spirit. So go now in forgiveness and peace and serve God in all that you think, do, and say. May the peace of God always be with you. Amen. people of God, go out as people of hope, go out as people renew, your sins are forgiven, you are made whole, now walk in the light of God.